So, Rich, where did you get this gorgeous little yellow submarine? Bright and fair. Well, it's really cute. Not only is it cute, it transports you back to maybe driving in Italy. Back to? Yes. Not that I've ever driven there, but I reckon if I did a virtual drive through Italy, this is what it would look like, minus the gum tree. You've seen too many postcards. Yeah, I know. It's not like that. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It does look like the rolling hills of Tuscany around here. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Well, hello. hello. Hi. Welcome to Phantom Hill. Kathy, I'm Karen. Nice to Karen, meet you. Karen, hi, Richard, Richard. Thanks for having us. You're How welcome. magnificent, <laughs> Kathy. It is just glorious it up is, here on gorgeous. this hill. We just love it. So being so close to Macedon or the Macedon Ranges, I'm guessing this might be a very special area as far as the minerals and... Well, it actually is an extinct volcanic site. Oh. Um, and we're in the Victorian volcanic ranges here. So we get a lot of the ancient minerals through our soil. Okay. Um, Which they... you can see because it's quite dark. Yeah, we've got, it's quite clayish. Which and is the secret to mm -hmm. growing fabulous garlic and it's, strawberries? It is, is that... part of, yes, because yeah. um, it contributes a lot. Shall we go and take a look? Yes, yeah, let's, let's go. go. Come on. <laughs> So this is newly planted garlic here? Absolutely. We're in our second week of planting at the moment and this is just what's come up straight away already. Yeah. It's just wonderful. It must be amazing soil. It is. It's um, really nourished soil. We take a lot of care in um, putting the nutrients back into the land. And like the flip side of that would be, you know, the major commercial cropping, which they wouldn't take that time. They would be pushing the fertiliser through, you know, spraying pesticides and then just exactly. reaping and then re-sowing straight exactly. away. Exactly, and this is an organic, sustainable way of doing it. How and many um, crops of strawberries have you actually done? We've actually only done one proper crop wow. our first year um, and it was just brilliant. I've got my fingers crossed, we've still got, I know it's late in the season, but you've still got strawberries somewhere on the crop here. Amazingly, we do. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah, you know, I can't wait to see what you're going to do with strawberries and garlic. Well, I'm going to make a gluten-free pasta with tuna, red onion and your garlic. <laughs> and I'm doing a bit of a chicken dish, but using your garlic and also your strawberries. But by the sounds of it, they don't need much cooking at all. So I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on them. Can't wait for that. Mm. I think we're in for a very good day. You know, I'm loving Kathy's garlic. I know the cloves are small, but this is a local product, and mm. quite often that is the case. And people just think, oh, the bigger the better, but that's not true. There is so much flavour in a smaller clove of local garlic. See, what I would do is I would just go for the largest cloves. You would, cloves. Would Yeah. You? Well, because then I only actually have to peel one clove and I'm not stuck there peeling all the little bits of paper and doing okay, it. Okay, well, let me give you a little tip on that. You basically just pop the skin off mm -hmm. by whacking the knife and then the skins just float off like that. Okay, all let's right. put that fry pan on and a considerable amount of that Cobra Estate olive oil into the pan. All right. So Do another little secret yeah. to making this pasta, just put two thirds of the onion in now yeah. and the other third will join it a bit later and we'll okay. end up with texture uh, or different texture of the onions okay. in there. I'm going to add the garlic as well. Now, do you want pepper? Because I always like adding pepper into oil because it actually gives another, as you yes. say, layer of flavour. And you just flavour profile. <laughs> it's like racial profiling, but with vegetables. I can take, I can take it out of myself too, you know. <laughs> um, if you put the pepper on, but if you also put a sprinkling of salt on the onions mm -hmm. now, yep. it'll extract the moisture and help the onions cook more evenly, mm. but also quickly. Yeah, enough. And pepper? Yeah. I could get used to this. Instructing? No. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. A little bit of dried oregano, about a half a tablespoon. Now, if you didn't have enough oil in the pan at this stage, what would start to happen is your onions will start to burn mm. and they're not going to caramelise slowly. So do not be shy of adding the right amount of or enough oil to the pan. Rich, the onion's starting to just colour up a little bit mm. and slowly caramelise. Let's add the other onion. So the onion that went in first is going to be soft and luscious. 
And this next onion is going to be a little bit behind it. So you've got this uneven onion in there, mm. but it creates a great texture in the pasta. Okay. Pasta, Karen? Yeah, yeah. I've yep. got to go in. Gluten-free barilla penne. Okay. So, Rich, I think we've got some beautiful... Is this a radicule or...? Is... I went through Kathy's garden just before I started and I found this beautiful, lovely... Treviso, bit... maybe. Yeah, maybe it's Treviso, but I... what I did love is the actual colour. Well, this will have a gorgeous bitterness to it. Mm. And I think it would be great in a salad with the pasta, but I just had another idea. It would also be really great just to shred it and sprinkle over the top. I would the like end. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that you've got that fresh awesome. element, but it also adds a bitter note to the pasta when mm. you've got that sweet caramelised. How are those onions, actually? Yeah. Richard, we're going to add our secret weapon. This is red wine vinegar. You could use any vinegar, although balsamic will sweeten it up a little bit too much and burn in the pan. You want looking for that sharpness, that verve to go with those caramelised onions, yep. and it brings a sweet sourness to the pasta. So I'm going to put a splash in. Yep. It's quite a bit, I suppose, more than yeah. a splash. Now, if you have a smell that, it could make <coughs> it <cold. coughs> Sorry. Quite strong. <laughs> I set you up, Lynn. I know. Sorry, sorry. I just realised what it that, was. Yeah. I kind of like the smell, but it always does clear the sinuses. Now, how are you going Well, like, being of true Italian heritage and I'm only mildly Italian? Well, I'm a confused... I've got confusing Italian heritage. <laughs> my father was born in Tunisia, yeah. which then my great-great-great-grandmother came from Sicily and the grandfather, great-great-grandfather came from Tuscany. Right. But they migrated to Tunis and they became French-speaking, if you like. But the surname Martini comes from Tuscany. Okay. And my mother is English-Irish. When my mother and father were married, yeah. she had to go and have lessons with my grandmother, okay. Meme. Yeah. Um, to learn to cook all of Dad's favourite dishes. Did your and father go to? Well, you know what my father used the to do. The other mother and say, what no. she like? No, no, cook there was her favourite no, dishes. None of that. And my dad actually didn't really appreciate my mum trying to cook that well because I know he used to secretly stop off at his mother's on the way home and have a good snack <laughs> before he got home to what my mum had tried to cook. Richard, I just did a check the pasta. And look at that. That is yeah. so ready, I believe. So we can now scoop the pasta. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I'll do that. Directly into the pan. Rich, while you get the pasta out, right. I'll pop a tin of Serena tuna with chilli. You don't mind a little bit of the pasta water coming out? A little bit of the pasta water would be great. OK. I reckon that's, that, that's yep, about that's, enough. Yep. OK. In the tuna. Just squashing a bit of that squashing, tuna. Yeah. And then give it a good stir, Rich. OK. So the excess water from the pasta is mixing with the oil and yep. is creating a sauce, if you like, around the onions. You're ready to go. Right. Pour it in there. Nice I little... think a squeeze of lemon yeah. over the top for All me right. would just finish that off. Just a little bit. Just to sharpen those flavours. And Rich, yeah. this Treviso. Treviso, thank from you, Kathy's, Kathy. Kathy's Garden. Yeah. But it's just that touch of bitterness that we both enjoy that I think will work perfectly. With the sweetness of the onion? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Go, go. you go, All you right. go, you go. Well, it's big enough for both of us to get in there. I want some of that. No, I'm done now. See you. Oh. <laughs> Trust us, you're going to love this recipe. It's our Barilla gluten-free penne pasta with tuna and caramelised red onion. Hey, Rich, when you finish yep. nibbling, why don't we go and see some more process of All the right. garlic drying with Kathy? Yep. maybe? We'll head to the drying rooms. OK. Cool. I still want to take that. Crop was pretty breathtaking, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, and it's definitely a labour of love, harvesting garlic, especially like that. Yeah. And we are going to use it in a sovereign lamb dish today. But I think the great thing about Kathy's garlic is 
it's fantastic in its raw state because yeah. we're going to be flavoring some yogurt to go with the lamb and it's just going to take one or two cloves finely grated mm. to get that hint or that bouquet of garlic through the yogurt but let's start with the lamb all right what we're going to do is bring back the double chop we are. Yeah. I've talked him into it. It's a good idea because okay. it's succulent and juicy and will showcase the sovereign lamb beautifully. So first thing you need to do, yeah. Rich, flip the lamb over. Yeah. How many bones have we got here? Eight. Well done. No, <laughs> I didn't count. Sometimes there's a sneaky ninth one on, yeah. but yeah. Rich, eight bones is going to give us four double chops. chops. And by double chop we mean you're nestling the knife through the middle of the back of the bones here. And just so you can cut an even piece of loin with two bones mm. attached all the way up the rack. So it's a bit more of a spread here. So do that put your first knife. One there. Yeah, use the point of your knife. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, on the plate. Yeah. And so this one, the bones are a little bit unevenly spread too, so really tight against. Because yeah. we're trying to get evenly spaced double chops. Lovely. And lucky last. And that one's not so complicated. But still, push up against that bone and sort of even up the meat before you cut it and straight down. That's it. So right. now we've got nice chops. All right. So I'm going to season the lamb with olive oil, salt and pepper. Great. While you're doing that, I might make a little yoghurt sauce mm -hmm. with Kathy's garlic. Couple of tablespoons of yogurt. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Bit of a jiggle with Bit your chops. Bit of a jiggle. When you're searing lamb chops like this, yep. if you're cooking them on a barbecue or a fry pan, really important, or two really important things. One, room temperature meat. Two, yep. preheated pan or barbecue. Mm. There we go. Mm. Wow, Kathy's Benton Hill garlic. So. Mmm. There's really no bitterness gentle. there. No, there's no. not. All right, there we have our lamb on. So we're just stirring the garlic, yep. oil, salt and pepper through. Now those double lamb chops are going to take around one and a half to two minutes on each side. Right. So you want to check just here. Yeah, great. That's, yeah. Okay, these are looking mouth watering, Karen. Oh. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my green rice salad. First thing I'm going to grab up is Kathy's wonderful kale, mm. which I want to cut really, really finely, and I'm going to dress that with a bit of salt and pepper and a little bit of vinegar. Yeah? Yeah. It'll add a lovely chewiness to the salad, having the raw kale. Yeah. Into the bowl. With the rest of it. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of olive oil. Lovely. All right. I'm going to add a handful of currants. Well, Rich, mm. before you do that, I've just done something to the currants. I put some vinegar in the pot, I brought it to the boil, yeah. and I threw a couple of handfuls in. And if you taste the currants, they're full of vinegar and they're soft and mm. plump and juicy. And this works so well in a salad like this. So I hope you don't mind. No, 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 no. This is, this is the whole point, is I get to learn so much from you. And you mentioned earlier you mm. wanted a little bit of vinegar in there. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Some nuts. Yeah. I'll just smash them up for you. Some big, some small. Doesn't have to be uniform. What do you reckon about the lamb? We get that off? You're done. I'm done. Good work. Okay. Sorry, Rich. No, I'll put the right. nuts in. Put your nuts in. Now I'm going to add my green rice. Where do you get this from? Health food stores. Now, if you can't find that, then I reckon just go for a, a, a small grain brown rice. I think um, there's another little trick, Rich, I wanted to show you. I'm going to end up with this really, really large black Are you taking patch notes? full <laughs> of so many tricks that I'll be able to do a magic show by the end of this. Well, all this detail <laughs> you will find for this recipe at intolerantcooks.com.au and for everything else we do in the season. So if we're going too quick, you're going to grab it all yeah. on the website. Yogurt. On the plate. Yeah. Instead of covering that gorgeous lamb, it's just sourced from below. And I think also we've put all this effort into getting so much flavour mm -hmm. into this dish, I think to finish it off and give it due respect. Mm. 
presented as beautifully as you possibly right, can. Now, how so we... we're going to have a go at that. Yep. Drop on the salad first, yep. I think somewhere there. Yep, chops on. Chops on. Ta-da. And then right. look, let me grab some of these always fresh artichokes. All right. There you go, Rich. All right. It's done. Should right. I just slice one of these? Yeah, please do. So you can have a nibble that way. Oh. That lamb is perfect. Let's go. Mm. How's the green rice? Beautiful. Mm. So there you have it. Seared sovereign lamb with a green rice and kale salad. And Kathy's gorgeous organic garlic yogurt sauce. Yeah. This is what this show's all about. I want to use the strawberries in a savoury way and it's it's based on a dish I had many, many years ago in Italy where yeah. they serve peppered strawberries, yeah. believe it or not. I think it with, with quail or something like that. So I'm I doing never, a dish... I've never heard of pepper with strawberries. I've heard of balsamic and strawberries. Peppered strawberries with, with quail it was. And we're going to do some peppered strawberries with some chicken today. So, Rich, we're going to use around eight cloves of garlic. Now that sounds a lot. Yeah. I'm going to take the pungency out of the garlic by warming it in some extra virgin oil yeah. and encouraging caramelisation of the garlic, which is going to become the dressing on the chicken. Okay. Could you be able to segment this lemon and then mm. chop it down? I'll Let's have that last clove. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Popping the heat on. Around 100 mils of oil in here. Look, it seems like a lot, yeah. but we're making an infusion here that's going to become part of the salad dressing and also to dress the chicken at the end. Rich, I'm just popping the garlic into the oil. Yeah. And it would be great if you could season this up with some salt and pepper. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of the fresh thyme. Awesome. I'm going to add the lemon in to the garlic. Yeah. Oil. And instantly you have a dressing. Yep. Okay, oh, oil yep. and some thyme, yep. if you could, and then give it a little bit of a toss yep. and we'll um. get a pan heating up. Mm -hmm. time. Uh, Rich, yep. I'm up to the strawberries now. Okay. I want to give them a really quick maceration, they call it, because these are just straight off the plant. Take them out, yep. slice them up, some in rounds just because I like to show off the inside of the strawberry, and also some in half, okay. some of the smaller ones. So you get that medley effect, you know, Absolutely. you get... Pop them into a bowl, add a touch of raspberry or strawberry vinegar, you could use red wine vinegar, yep. just a slight hint of sharpness to the strawberries. And then I'll swap you, could you put a pinch or two of salt in there yep. and grind some black pepper? Yeah, all right. And I'll sear the chicken. Rich? Yep. Fennel. Another one of, well, my favourite ingredients. Could you just maybe pick off the finer little fennel fronds? Yep. And I'm going to finely slice it on a mandolin. A little bit of salt Look on the fennel. Right. Yeah, I love it. Mm. I love it like that. You know, a quick little story. When I was a kid growing up, we barely sat down to the dinner table. Whenever fennel was in season, it was in big chunks in a big bowl of yeah. water on the table. And we used to fight as sisters over who got to drink the fennel water. Oh. Yeah. I mean, fennel was almost like peas and beans in my house. We had it all the time. I never drank pea water. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a lucky thing. That could be. I can't decide what I want down first. I think we'll put the fennel down first. Yeah. 
on the plate. Just like that. Chicken is done. And we'll get a bit of height into this dish, shall we? Yeah, why not? Okay, Rich. Oh. Looking good. It's now, what will we put so on wonderful. next? Let's um, pop the strawberries on. Yeah. Just a few here and there. And you can see because the strawberries have been peppered and slightly salted, they're seasoned, but they've softened down mm. a little bit. And then that delicious lemon and Fenton Hill garlic dressing we made earlier just goes over the top of the chicken and yep. a little on the fennel salad. And that plate's done. It's my Steggles seared chicken with fennel and garlic dressing with peppered strawberries. Smells divine. So you definitely go first. That's don't mind if I Yeah, do. go, go. I've had a lot of strawberries lately. Not peppered and they're beautiful. Oh, peppered strawberries are divine. I don't know about you, Rich, but I've had an awesome day today here with Kathy at Fenton Hills Farm. <laughs> <laughs> She's easy. And for this recipe and everything else we do on this show, mm. head to intolerantcooks.com.au. We'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. It was really, really fun. <laughs> it was really good. It was really fun. I'm so I'm glad you enjoyed the strawberry. <laughs>